fancy spider, though small, is determined, has perseverance, has creativity, has strength, and creates something out of nothing. This is why I wanted to share with you why the spider of all things is my spirit of choice. I also know that there's probably some of uh, you that are, they don't mind spiders at all, do you? <laughs> they really do make um, beautiful tapestries if you can see them as art. Now, the obvious reason why I chose the spider, of course, is I admire their handiwork. Uh, I am a weaver and a crocheter, both physically and magically. Simultaneously, I weave spells into my work as I create. The spider is a symbol of creativity, weaving nature's mandalas creating something from nothing. And I strive to emulate that spirit. So maybe it was the spider that actually chose me. Numerous cultures attribute the spider's ability to spin webs with the origin of spinning and textile weaving, basket weaving, knot weaving and net making um, many goddesses that are, uh, many household goddesses that are in charge of this type of handiwork either um, come in the form of a spider or have spider familiars, let's say, because they are the masters of the weaving and the web. Um, philosophers often use the spider's web as a metaphor for the interconnectedness of all life. See UU principle number seven. Specifically, it says respect for the interconnected, interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. And today terms like the internet and the World Wide Web, as Panda mentioned earlier, evoke that interconnectivity of the spider web. Have you ever wanted something that was just outside of your reach? How many times will you try to attain that price. Remember, you do not fail until you give up and the spirit of the spider will show you that we should never give up. Watch the spider throwing a thread across a, a, a great, great to them uh, cavern and to, to get it to land on that branch in front of them. If it misses, they will retract it and they will try again over and over until that line takes purchase on that branch and they will build their found, the foundation of their home, hearth and pantry, their entire world from nothing, it comes straight from themselves. What a great metaphor for us creating our own worlds, our own destiny. There are quite a few stories and legends built around spiders that show just how mighty these little ones can be. One such features King Robert the Bruce of Scotland. The spider here is depicted as an inspirational symbol, according to an early 14th century legend. The legend tells of Robert the Bruce encountering a spider while he was taking refuge in a cave. 
he was at a time when he had had a series of military failures against the English. And one version tells that while taking refuge in this cage, cave, cave, he witnesses a spider continuously falling just to climb up again on its silken thread to its web and falling again and trying again. Due to perseverance, the spider eventually succeeds, demonstrating that if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And taking this as a symbolic uh, message of hope and perseverance, Bruce came out of hiding and eventually won Scotland's independence. Huzzah! Thank you for the inspiration, little spider. Although the spider is small, it is depicted as quite helpful in some stories. There is a story that has been told by more than one source. Uh, one version credits the account to King David in the Bible, and the same story can be told um, featuring the prophet Muhammad. Both men took ref, uh, refuge from an enemy in a cave. And in both circumstances, God sent a spider to weave a web over the opening of the cave so that the enemy would, came by and reasoned that no one would be in that cave because they would have broken the spider web had they entered. Thank you, helpful friend spider. The spider has symbolized patience and, and persistence due to its hunting technique of setting webs and waiting for its prey to become ensnared. This unfortunately has made her the villain of some stories. But we can appreciate the cunning and the perseverance and the persistence of the spider, say, in the poem by Mary Howitt, circa 1829. I'm sure you all know the first line of this poem, but maybe you've not heard it in its entirety. Here it goes. Will you walk into my parlor? Said the spider to the fly. Tis the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy. The way into my parlor is up a winding stair and I have many curious things to show when you are there. No, 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 said the little fly. To ask me is in vain. For who goes up your winding stair can ne'er come down again. I'm sure you must be weary, dear, with soaring up so high. Will you rest upon my little bed, said the spider to the fly. There are pretty curtains drawn around, and sheets are fine and thin. And if you like to rest a while, I'll snugly tug you in. No, 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 said the little fly, for I've often heard it said, they never, never wake again who sleep upon your bed, said the cunning spider to the fly. Dear friend, what can I do to prove the warm affection I've always felt for you? I have within my pantry good store of all that's nice. I'm sure you're very welcome. Will you please to take a slice? No, 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 said the little fly. Kind sir, that cannot be. I've heard what's in your pantry and I do not wish to see. Sweet creature, said the spider. You're witty and you're wise. How handsome are your gauzy wings. How brilliant are your eyes. I've a little looking glass, 
upon my parlor shelf. If you'll step in one moment, dear, you shall behold yourself. I thank you, gentle sir, she said, for what you're pleased to say, and bidding you good morrow now, I'll call another day. The spider turned him round about and went into his den, for well he knew the silly fly would soon come back again. So he wore, wove a subtle web in a little corner sly and set his table ready to dine upon the fly. Then he came out to his door again and merrily did sing, Come hither, hither, pretty fly, with the pearl and silver wing. Your robes are green and purple. There's a crest upon your head. Your eyes are like the dime bright, but mine are dull as lead. Alas, alas, how very soon this silly little fly, hearing his wily flattering words, came slowly flitting by. With buzzing wings, she aloft, then near and nearer drew, thinking only of her brilliant eyes and green and purple hue, thinking only of her crested head, poor foolish thing at last. Up jumped the cunning spider and fiercely held her fast. He dragged her up his winding stair into his dismal den within his little parlor, but she's ne'er came out again. And now, dear little children, who may this story read, to idle, silly, flattering words, I pray you ne'er give heed. Unto an evil counselor, close heart and ear and eye, and take a lesson from this tale of the spider and the fly. Well, I hope we always use our spidey sense for good and not evil, but it really comes in handy in a debate. Tenacious is the word that I'm thinking of when uh, this spider tried everything. Are you hungry? Uh, would, you like, <laughs> would you like to rest a while? Are you tired? You're, uh, oh, you're beautiful. You know, flattering words was the end of it. They, the poor little fly uh, met its match. <laughs> That's a good lesson there. The spider teaches us a good lesson there. So spiders are associated with creation myths, right? Because they weave their own artistic worlds. I do have a favorite spider entity. I'm sorry that Amanda's not here tonight because I'm sure she knows this one. Grandmother spider or the spider woman is a native American deity who appears in native lore across the continent, especially in the Southwest. Hmm. The Hopi you believe that she thought the universe into existence. The Navajo taught that she was the savior of humankind. And the Cherokee say that she brought light to the people. Grandmother Spider is a mother to humankind, protecting and nurturing us, guiding us along our paths with her magic. So now I have another story with voices. <clears throat> now the Choctaw people say that when the people first came up out of the ground, they were encased in cocoons, their eyes closed, their limbs folded tightly to their bodies. And this was true of all the people, the bird people, the animal people, the insect people, and the human people. The great spirit took pity on them and sent down someone to unfold their limbs 
dry them off and open their eyes. But the opened eyes saw nothing because the world was dark, no sun, no moon, not even stars. All the people moved around by touch. And if they found something that didn't eat them first, they ate I'll be it right raw back, guys. because they had no fire to cook it with. All the people met in a great powwow with the animal and bird people taking the lead. The animal and bird people decided that life was not good, but cold and miserable. A solution must be found. Someone spoke from the dark. I have heard that the people in the East have fire. This caused a stir of wonder. What could fire be? There was a general discussion and it was decided that if, as rumor had it, fire was warm and gave light, they should have it too. Another voice said, but the people of the East are too greedy to share with us. So it was decided that the bird and animal people should steal what they needed, the fire. But who should have the honor? Grandmother Spider volunteered. I can do it. Let me try. But at the same time, Opossum began to speak. <clears throat> I, Opossum, am a great chief of the animals. I will go to the east. And since I am a great hunter, I will take the fire and hide it in the bushy hair on my tail. It was well known that Opossum had furriest tail of all the animals, so he was selected. When Opossum came to the east, he soon found the beautiful red fire jealously guarded by the people of the east. But Opossum got closer and closer until he picked up a small piece of burning wood and stuck it in the hair of his tail which promptly began to smoke and flame. The people of the East said, look, that so possum has stolen our fire. They took it and put it back where it came from and drove opossum away. Poor opossum. Every bit of his hair had burned from his tail. And to this day, opossums have no hair at all on their tails. Once again, the powwow had to find a volunteer chief. Grandmother Spider said, let me go, I can do it. But this time a bird was selected, Buzzard. Buzzard was very proud. I can succeed where Opossum has failed. I will fly to the east on my great wings then hide the stolen fire in the beautiful long feathers on my head. Birds and animals still did not understand the nature of fire. So Buzzard flew to the east on his powerful wings, swooped past those who were guarding the fire and picked up a small piece of burning ember and hid it in his head feathers. Buzzard's head began to smoke and flame. The people of the East said, look, Buzzard has stolen the fire. And they took it and put it back where it came from. Poor Buzzard. His head was now bare of feathers, red and blistered looking. And to this day, buzzards have naked heads that are bright red and blistered looking. The powwow now sent Crow to look the situation over for Crow was very clever. 
crow at that time was pure white and had the sweetest singing voice of all the birds. But he took so long standing over the fire trying to find the perfect piece to steal that his white feathers were smoked black and he breathed so much smoke that when he tried to sing out, it came out as a harsh caw, caw. The council said, opossum has failed, buzzard and crow have failed. Who shall we send? Tiny grandmother spider shouted with all her might, let me try it, please. Though the council members thought grandmother spider had little chance of success, it was agreed that she should have her turn. Grandmother Spider looked then, just like she looks now. She had a small torso suspended on eight legs. She walked on all her wonderful legs towards the stream where she found some clay. With those legs, she made a tiny clay container and a lid that fit perfectly with a tiny notch for air in the corner of the lid. Then she put the container on her back, spun her web all the way to the east, and walked tiptoe on the web all the way there. Until she came to the fire. She was so small that the people of the east took no notice. She took a tiny piece of fire and put it in the container and covered it with the lid. Then she walked back on tiptoe along the web until she came to the people. Since they couldn't see any fire, they said, Grandmother Spider has failed. Oh no, she said, I have the fire. She lifted the pot from her back and the lid from the pot and the fire flamed up into its friend, the air. Straight away, all the birds and animal people began to discuss who would get this wonderful warmth. Bear said, I'll take it. But then he burned his paws on it and decided fire was not for animals. For look what happened to Possum. The birds wanted no part of it as Buzzard and Crow were still nursing their wounds. The insects thought it was very pretty, but they too stayed far away from fire. Then a small voice said, we will take it if Grandmother Spider will help. The timid humans, whom none of the animals or birds thought much of, were volunteering. So Grandmother Spider taught the human people how to feed the fire with sticks and wood to keep it from dying, how to keep the fire safe in a circle of stone so it couldn't escape and hurt them or their homes. While she was at it, she taught the humans about pottery made of clay and fire and about weaving and spinning at which Grandmother Spider was an expert. The Shakta remember. They made a beautiful design to decorate their homes. A picture of a spider, grandmother spider, two sets of legs up, two sets of legs down with a fire symbol on her back. This is so their children never forget to honor grandmother spider, the fire bringer. The end. I think I need to crochet a spider like that. <laughs> Grandmother spider. Doris would like a, a friend. Let's talk about actually um, taking the spider as a spirit guide, okay? When a spider comes to you in a vision or a dream, don't be frightened. Uh -uh. It's just giving you the message that you weave your own web. 
Your reality is yours to create. Spider meaning makes it clear that what you see before you is a result of your thoughts. And this principle I have used in fiber magic because every tangible item around you in the world started out as an idea, right? So it has to be firmly in your head and it, it helps to use the heart it a little a little bit and then it can come down your arms and out your hands and into the world that's that's fiber magic and mm. that's what the spider does and the spider shows you that you can do this spirit animal teaches that if your current reality does not suit you then it is time to make changes just that simple Easier said than done, but with the spider's help, you can persevere and be strong and create your own world, All right? Now, if you have the courage to look closely and take note of the type of spider that comes to call, you will get a more specific message. Now, here's a spider that we all have in our backyards. This is the orb weaver spider. Some people call them spiny bellies or spiny backs. They're those little spiders that, I mean, like they, they throw webs uh, in a second. You can just, you park your car and go into the house, come back again, and there's a, a spider web <laughs> on your mirror, right? So if it is an orb weaver spider that appears to you, it signifies that you are the engineer of your destiny. Now is the time to catch your dreams and take advantage of all the things that present itself. There are no obstacles in your path. Go for it. And that's what the little spiny belly uh, orb weaver does. I got an opportunity to crochet an orb weaver. It, it was about that big and I put it on a, um, a hair band. So uh, Donna Gutineris is the person that I magicked up the spider for and it's on a band because she wears it on her hand like a, a ring and it's probably about the size of her hand and that's how she does her magic. When she does healing, she imagines the spider weaving a web, kind of like knitting, they, they'll, they'll, that's what they say, bones knit themselves together. You know, she um, uses that in her healing magic and uses that spider to, uh, to repair, to repair the person's health. Um, so an orb weaver spider would be very good to see in a vision. Of course, when the black widow spider symbolism crosses your path, it's time to reevaluate what you are doing. And you all know what a black widow spider looks like. That's the one with the, the red mark on its back. You've seen the comic books. Black widow. <laughs> black spider with a red like diamond shape. Okay. So there is something that you are creating that is not in line with the dreams you are trying to create when you see the Black Widow. Therefore, you must take an inventory of your thought processes and see where you are sabotaging yourself. That is the message of the Black Widow. When the jumping spider leaps into your life, it signifies that now is the time to showcase your uniqueness. It's like, ta-da, I'm a spider. No. And uh, let your talents shine. There is now an opportunity to be yourself in a safe environment. Take time to imagine your hidden talents and go ahead and share them with the world. That is the message of the uh, leaping spider. If you see a wolf spider, 
right? That symbolism insists that you pursue your objectives now. Pounce like the wolf. Now is the right moment. So it is best to take action using all of your creative abilities. The goal may look unattainable. However, this arachnid assures you that with your quick response, you will be successful. So if there's something that you're, that you have, you have a plan, but you're just like, I, I don't think I can do it. Call upon the strength of the wolf spider and do it now. No time like the present. If a brown spider has made its presence known, it symbolizes the need to remove the toxic energies that are trying to manipulate your thinking and your actions. Find solitude and clear your head and return to yourself. Leave other people's perceptions of who you are behind. That is the brown spider. When water spider symbolism appears, it is a reminder that your emotional well-being is just as important as your physical health. Those two things go hand in hand. You will have to allow yourself to feel the emotional turmoil within you because only by feeling these emotions can they be released and healing takes place. Holding on to these old wounds will not serve you. Water spider will help you to work through those emotions so that you can start healing and it will improve your physical health as well. Next, we have the daddy long legs. That my house was overrun with daddy long legs a couple of years ago. They've, uh, since we, I guess we, we cleaned out all of their little hiding places when we re, redid the house. So you don't see as many now. But when they show up, it represents the fact that you need to look at the big picture so that you can understand on a deeper level what is happening in your life. Take a good look at what is going on under the surface of things and then adjust your plans accordingly. And I, I really do believe that as we went room by room in our house, ridding ourselves of clutter, we were also uh, ridding our minds of clutter and our lives of clutter. And I feel like we live in a much healthier house right now. And I don't see the daddy long legs as much as I did before, just once in a while. They just pop up, say, hey, good, good job. Keep at it. You know, don't, don't ever give up. All right. So those are my spider um, totems and what they symbolize. The spider will um, show itself when you need that message and the different types of spiders will come and go. Um, there are day, you know, plenty of days I don't see a spider and then I'll see them, you know, they'll be right in my path. For, for such a, 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 a nasty animal like, uh, if, according to Hollywood movies, the spider is just out to get you all the time, but they're really very passive creatures, Birch. Yes. They're extremely I passive can't. creatures, and they won't bother you unless you walk through their web, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> it's then true. you get a full it's week's aerobic workout. <laughs> yes. But, but they won't bother you. They're going to stay doing their thing. They don't, they don't want to bother you. And, but if they have a message for you, they'll just creep up. Hello. Just like Mother Spider. Hi there. Hello. I can do it. Hello. Will you listen to me? <laughs> no, I'm too busy with my everyday life. I can't be bothered by this little spider, you know. If they get in your, that's when you're going to walk through a web and they're going to get in your face. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's only a last resort. 
Okay, so there is much to learn from the spider. Spider weaves her web, we weave our realities. Spider reminds us that we create many of the situations in our lives, good and bad. So take the responsibility and be ready for the consequences and the rewards. Spiders have the extraordinary capability of creating, weaving, and spinning their own worlds. This ability shows us and teaches us the gift of creation. But we must realize this. The choices we make, coupled with our attitude, is very powerful magic. And that is the spirit of the spider. So stay crafty. I also have this in my blog on my, um, my website, fibermagic.com, magic with a K. 